Sophie, thanks so much for taking the time to come on the podcast. 100th episode, big time one, a lot of pressure on you. Um, but uh, yeah, if you could just introduce yourself, you know, where you're from, how old you are, your position and, and where you're currently playing, I'd love to dive into your career a little bit. Yes, my name is Sophie Sveva and I'm 22 years old and I'm from Denmark. I grew up in Copenhagen. Um, and right now I play for Real Madrid and I play as a left back. Very nice, very nice. So um, where did you grow up uh, playing football? How, what age did you start playing? Uh, did you play in academies or how, did, how was your development? Yeah, so I started when I was pretty young because my whole family is like a football family. So I started when I was around five years old. Um, and at that time when I grew up, we lived a little bit outside Copenhagen. So I started in a, a little club, local club. Um, so yeah, that's how it started, I would say. Yeah. Mm. Mm. So so what uh, what club was that? How did you... Did you did you play there your whole life, or what? What was kind of your journey leading up to, you know, wanting to play professionally? Did you always want to play professionally, or, yeah. you know, obviously you said you know, you're in a football family, but did you have that dream at, at a young age? So I always wanted to be a professional footballer. Um, since I was yeah running with the ball, to be honest, I had big goals even though I was so young. So I started in the local club. It's called Hovi. It's like um, a city in Hasa. It's mm. like in Denmark. Um, yeah. And then after that, like women's football was not so big in Denmark at that time. Mm. And so I had to, you know, move to another club where they really like believed in women's football. And um, so I moved to Bonbu. Um, it's a club called. A uh, pretty young age, I would say. I was like 13, 12, 12, 13, wow. there around. So it was a, a huge problem, like with like with the travel. And, you know, my mm. friends me every day, four times, five times a week. Um, but that was the only choice you had uh, at that young age, because where I was living at that time, there was not really like a big football uh, women's team. So I moved there and then after that, when I grew older, there was a team who um, was near me, who believed in football. So I actually moved to Copenhagen to play. Um, mm -hmm. And then when I turned, what was it? I think I was 14. Um, then um, I got contacted by a women's team, actually. So it was like a pretty big difference compared to like playing youth football mm. and go to a, a senior level. Um, so I moved there and then I got my first semi-pro contract when I was 16 for Brunswick. Mm. So I actually moved back to Brunswick where I actually was some of my youth years. Mm -hmm. Brunswick, uh, they, they have a pretty good men's team as well, yeah? Yes, they have the men's team okay. in the best league. Um, so uh, you cannot be full-time footballer, like professional in Denmark. Mm -hmm. and I think now it's developing a little bit more, but there's still not really a lot of money in it. And so I knew that I wanted to go to another country uh, so I could be a professional full-time, you know? Mm -hmm. So after that, um, my semi pro, I was there until I was 18. And then I moved to Sweden at that time to sign my first professional contract so I was full-time so I had actually to drop out of school to like okay. my dream because in Denmark you could not live um, of it so mm. I moved there and then yeah things just started moving very fast for me mm. so. very nice so you said you first you first moved to to Bromley just to give people an idea how long was that was the travel you know, that uh, you had to go each day uh, f from where you live to, to Bronby? When I was young, it was about 40 minutes to an hour. Okay. And, um, and traffic. And so, 
yeah, it was directly home from school, directly to training, and then home again, mm -hmm. to school, and then sleep, and then repeat, you know. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was definitely hard. Um, but yeah, that's what I had to sacrifice to, to be where I am today, I would say. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So so then you said after Bronby you moved uh, to Copenhagen. And um, what was, was that also, that was also uh, youth women's football? And then you said you got contacted again by, uh, by the women's team at Bronby? Mm -hmm. So I played my youth in Bronby pretty much. Okay. All my youth here, I would say, and then I moved to another club closer to where I live because they they develop football uh, for women there. Mm. And they were a good team at that time, and I was like, why not? Because then I came closer to home. Um. So yeah, and then we did really good with that team. So then mm. I moved to senior in Bellerop, it's called. So that was even okay, yeah. like far away from Bunbury, so I could play senior football already there. Mm -hmm. So I played senior football for a young age, but um, yeah, it really took uh, took fast, I would say. And then yeah. already when I was 16, I came back to Bromby because then they wanted to sign me a semi-pro contract. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very nice. And what would you notice, what did you notice like the difference going from, from youth to, you know, adult women's football? Yeah, I would say I've always been built like really physically, like tall, I'm tall, strong. So I would not say that the physically aspect was a problem for me. Um, it was more like the speed of it and it, of course, it went a little bit faster than the, the play. Um, so I think that, but yeah, I would say that. Okay. Uh, so would you say like like genetically you're you're just quite uh, physically good or or did you say, did you did you put in some extra work to get there or how was that? Um, no, of course you work for it in the gym, but at that time yeah, yeah, yeah. I was so young, you know, I didn't really like yeah. do that because I just went to school and I practiced. And um, so I've been blessed, I would say, with being like tall yeah. and strong. Um, so yeah, but of course now you have to to do a lot of work to to be the best, you know, like physically For sure. and, and yeah, like that because now everybody is your size, you know. So mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, some Scandinavians are just built different, have, have some good blood, you know. So <laughs> that's what they do. Yeah, I, I know many of them. So. Yeah. Um. So when when you move to how did you get contacted by the club in Sweden? Did they see your games or did you have an agent? How, how did that go? So I signed my agent at a pretty young age, actually. He had been looking for me for many years, actually. Mm -hmm. um, so I signed with my agent when I was, was I 17 years old? Mm -hmm. um, and then this club, FC Rosenborg in Sweden, is it called? It's like right on the other side from a from Denmark, you know, so it's so easy to go there. And yeah, yeah. Okay. They uh, have a pretty good team. Like, they had Marta from Brazil, Liga mm -hmm. uh, and and big players, you know. So I knew if I wanted to be more, um, I had to move there. So they have been watching a lot of my games. And then they wanted, after one game, I remember I was playing. I was playing really good. Wow. After the game, they were, like, immediately calling my agent, like, we need her wow. now. ASAP, you know. So yeah. Then I, and then I just, yeah, I really, I really did good in the in the Swedish league, and it really, mm. um, yeah, developed fast. And then after one and a half year, I got contacted um by a club called Wolfsburg, one of the best uh, teams in Europe. They're in Champions League final now. And at that time, I was twenty years old, you know. So I was like. Wow. Should you go or not? You know, it's the highest yeah. level, and and I was like, I was ready to to take on a new challenge. I could see myself developing even more because you know, when you are in the same environment for some years, you need more challenges. And exactly. I was like, why not? And then I just, yeah, I moved to Germany. And wow! Wow! Yeah. N nice journey. Did you learn? Did you learn any German? 
I would say I learned a little bit, you know. Yeah. I had it in school too, so I kind of had had the basics. And mm. So yeah, I moved there, and I was only there for one year because it was not the best year of my life, I would say. Mm. Why and the environment or the, or the club or? No, I would say the club is really good. Um, the environment is really really professional. I just mm. didn't play as much as I wanted to, and I was so yeah. Young, so. I have for sure. plans for me, so I wanted to play. Yeah, I want to play every game, of course. Of like, course. Uh, at football, you know. Mm. That year was definitely the hardest year of my life. Um, moving far, even far away from your family to Germany. For sure. Um, and then sitting in an apartment all by yourself when your your professional life doesn't really go the way you want to, and that's why you to another country, you know. Mm, absolutely yeah i mean that, that's what people that's that's one of the main reasons i have this podcast is you know i mean obviously it's it's easy to you know see people's instagram and the signings and stuff like that but no one sees the hard work behind it the obstacles and, and what you had to go through and you know like you said I, I think uh a big thing that that a lot of footballers go through especially moving country to country is is loneliness and you know, if you, if you have that ability to, you know, make yourself, you know, uh, try to make yourself at home wherever you are. I mean, I think that's a superpower. So, yeah. um, you know, what are, what are like a couple other things you learn from, from that experience in, in, in Wolfsburg? Yeah, I would say like when you are in it, it's the hardest thing ever <laughs> yeah. like mentally yeah. and just like have your have the like energy every day to practice and even though do your best even though you know you're not gonna play in the weekends so that that mentally aspect was really hard you're like what am i even training for you know if i don't even play, mm. know how good i do um so i was struggling a lot i would say but i have always been really strong mentally and mm -hmm. where i wanted to go and i knew where i wanted to be and who i who i am as a person and i learned that in a pretty young age um mm. so i would say like it was it was hard but i made through it and now on the other side now when i'm here in spain one year after i i moved here to spain mm. i would say i learned a lot from that year and i'm actually happy that i've been through that kind of things in such a young age because now i'm so strong mentally and i'm like if i don't play one game here i'm like yeah whatever you know i have been out on the bench for a whole week. exactly so in that yeah. way, it gave me a lot and i grew a lot as a person and i would say like i matured a lot and i learned how to who i was without football you know what i mean mm, for sure yeah it's a great point yeah, I mean, you know, two things to touch on there. I mean, I think I think the toughest point, like you said, is, you know, obviously as, as a footballer at your level, you have to, besides team training, you have to do extras. You know, you have to, you know, work in the gym. You have to take care of your nutrition, your sleep and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And it's easy to do that when you're playing, like you said, because okay. you're motivated by that next game, you know. But the hardest thing to do, is to continue that discipline and those habits when you're not playing. And I think you said it perfectly there is, is, you know, maybe you didn't know what the next opportunity would be, but the fact that you, you kept up those, those good habits and you stayed, you know, in the fight yeah. is why, you know, you're at Madrid and, and you're succeeding. So I think, you know, sometimes we don't see, you know, the light at the end of the tunnel. We don't see the next step. But I think the most important thing is if you could like stay in the grind and, and continue to work on those habits, exactly. good things will come, you know. And, and also, I think with that being said, like you won't have regret. So like you could also maybe you can choose that other path and you could say, you know what, you know, I'm not playing, you know, maybe I'll just start going out a couple of times per week, you know, drinking stuff, you know. And you, you kind of lose out and then you go to your next club and you're not ready. And it's like, wow, wh why didn't I keep up those habits? So I, I think that's huge. So I, what I did to keep on the motivation was because I played for the national team uh, from Denmark, you know. So I was mm. like, you know, whatever, I don't play here, but at least I can do everything in training. So I'm ready when I go with the national team, you know, and we have... Euro, so we have we have World Cup this summer. You know, there's always the next thing you have to look forward to, 
Um, so I would say that was what was back in my head, you know, like if you go with the national team, you have to be ready for that. So that's what I actually practiced for. Um, mm. So, yeah, I would say that was more my motivation at the end that I need to be ready when I go with the national team. So it doesn't work here, but at least I get success with the national team, you know. Mm -hmm, for sure. Yes. Yeah, so, so with that being said, can you take us into a little bit into your national team career? Like when did you start playing with them? How did how did they, you know, find you and, and just a little bit into that? So I've actually been in the system like the whole um, the whole road or what you can call well, it. Since yeah. I was um I think it was when you were thirteen you go into these um camps and then um, then they just like take people out after next camp then they you know take um how do you say that? Um less people with them every mm. time and then when it comes to under 16 it's called the national team um so then yeah i've been following the whole roles under 16 national team 17 under 19 wow. and, and i moved up to play with the older ones on an older national team uh, at that time so i was actually playing under 19 for three years in a row because wow wow was, yeah in the first i was playing with 98 and 99 and i'm 2000 wow and then the next year I was playing with my own age and then the young, yeah. So it was like that. So I was 18. Um, I think I was 17 when I started practicing a little bit with the senior national team. And then when I mm. turned 18, I got my debut for the senior and I've been there since 18. Wow, wow. So what was the, when you got that debut, what, what was the feeling? You know, what was your feeling when, when you got that debut? I mean, when you have been in the system for so long and you have had the shirt on, you know, and you yeah. have experienced all of that, I would just say, like, it was an honor to just finally stand there. And that was what you could uh, succeed in Denmark, you know, be in this mm. team. So I felt like my dream came true and I finally, like, got what I have been working for. So I would say I was really proud of myself and, and of course, happy. And then just the next thing is the key to just stay in the system, you know, and not mm. go out and in. So, but I I have been um, with the national team since I was eighteen. Wow, wow! And who was that debut against? It was against Finland. It was a okay. a training camp, so it was mm. a, a friendly game. Yeah, mm -hmm. I got nice. Who who is the best team you you think you've played against? You know, from a national team level. Definitely, uh, last summer we played the Euros in England. I don't know if you know that. We mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would say Germany is a, is a tough opponent. For sure. So they are they are really good. Yeah, yeah. What what do you notice? You know, from from country to country. You know, is would you say Germany is just very well, well organized, well disciplined, you know, similar to their men's team? Yes, I would say they are, they are really, they have good facilities. They have like a good setup. Um, Denmark has that too, but of course, when you look at it in international way, there, there's not so many money in the Danish football yet. Um, so mm. If you compare the money, um, then of course you get more from Germany or Sweden in the international aspect, um, which of course we can develop that here in Denmark and to mm. take it to the next step. Um, but yeah, I would say, and also because Germany is such a big country, you have no yeah, yeah, yeah. To, to choose. So of course they they are better, you know, because Denmark is so small. I think we have six mm -hmm. people. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. I mean, yeah. So of course, you produce some good footballers, though, you know, on both sides. So, it's not, yeah, yeah. Say, yeah but, uh, we have a pretty good team, actually. Compared For to sure. You, we are. Yeah, yeah. So, um, how did you make that move from from Wolfsburg to uh, Real Madrid? When when did that come about? So I actually signed a pretty long contract when I was in Germany. I signed four years. Mm -hmm. um, to like they wanted me also for the future but I was just like after one year I was just burned out you know and I talked with my agent and I wanted to 
to go somewhere where I felt appreciated and I, I could play. So my agent and me, we, it kind of happened fast because it was a lot of money was what wanted for me, of course, because I had to be there for four years, you know. Mm. Um, so then when Madrid came and they, they were really interested in signing me, so they bought me out. Um, wow. And then I actually, it was in the winter break at that time. So I was like, I cannot go somewhere on traveling. I, I was always like, um, it was a terrible vacation because I was just yeah. like, waiting, you know, I couldn't really do anything because I didn't know if I had to be in, in Spain after vacation or in mm. Germany. So it ended up me going back to Germany. Um, and because the deal wasn't going through yet, so I had to start up with Germany and uh, Wolfsburg. So I had to do the physical test. I had to do everything, okay. you know, one week of training and preseason. And I was like, God damn, you know, when it just wasn't <laughs> no through. Because I yeah. had in my head that, okay, I actually have to leave this place. So yeah, yeah, yeah. me coming here and do all these tests for nothing, you know. Um, so then, yeah, it ended up with me signing the contract. I had to pack my whole apartment down, fix it. Wow. Then, yeah, I was in Madrid. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, stressful times, but definitely not a not a bad place to move to, right? No, I would say yeah. I was really happy. Yeah. So, how long have you have you signed with Madrid for? So I then they took over my Wolfsburg contract, and mm. so. Well, pretty much. I have one year left. I've been here for okay. two years now this summer. Nice. And, uh, no, one and a half. I've been here for one and a half years, sorry. Okay. And then I have one year left. So next summer, yeah, mm. I, my, my contract is running out. Mm, sounds good. So, so what would you say, you know, from, you know, obviously playing in four different countries, Denmark, Sweden, um, Germany, and, and Spain. What would you say the, the difference is, I mean, between, uh, you know, how, how players train, how they treat their bodies, you know, stuff like this, prof level of professionalism. What would you say some of the differences are? So I, if I compare Spain to Germany, when I was working on Madrid, I would say I actually got surprised because – in Germany, then Wolfsburg, I was thinking that it would be really like a lot of gyms, a lot of like they think about a lot of the physical stuff and and everything like that. Um, but uh, we actually only had like one gym session every week, and it was uh, it was more of because I was talking a lot with the the physical coach, and he was like mm. more um, mobility than with your strength. Mm -hmm. Um, for the body to be more mobile, to run faster and stuff like that. And at that time, we had a lot of games because we're Champions League, the Cup, the League. So we had like a game every third day. So then it's really hard to do gym, you know, because they don't want us to be um, overtrained when we go into a game. So that's, you understand that. And then mm. training, um, it was a lot of structure in Germany, you know. It was a lot of uh, tactics and you knew just when you went into the game, like if this girl gets the ball, you know, who's going to press this, like it was really mm. practical and system wise was, they were really smart and uh, it's this German structure, you know, like, yeah, 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 it's really structured. And I would say then uh, Spain and Madrid, we do a lot of gym. I would say hey. right there. Yeah, it's interesting. <laughs> So sorry, man. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so we do a lot of gym. We do a lot of activation every day. You wow. have some gym exercise, but it's not like you get um, too tired of it. So it's mm. you go out the whole week. So you do a little bit in the morning, and maybe you have some voluntary after, like for upper body. Mm -hmm. And so I would definitely say in Spain we do more gym and explosive work than I did in Germany. Um, wow. Spain here, the gym is basically explosive, and uh, I think that's also the reason why you see in Spain football that people are so uh, explosive and so technical and like really good, like with them um, with turning. And there's a lot of mm. different parts of that, you know. When Germany, it's more like 
yeah, power. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Spain is more tactic and they're more explosive and technical players. So we put mm. a lot of explosive um, practice and then tactical uh, ta technique on the football. Mm. Environment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so, what I mean, obviously, everyone has their own, um, you know, preferences. What do you like better as a player? Do you like, you know, more mobility and, and, and less, you know, weights and, and gym work, or do you feel better when, when you're in the gym? Um, I would say I had to get used to being here in Spain first because um, I didn't practice so much in the gym before when I was in Germany or Sweden. Mm -hmm. so I would say I'm, I'm so much stronger since I've been here for one and a half year. My, uh, yeah, I feel stronger and I feel fast. I feel more explosive, and I mm. think that it has given me a lot to work here. And we have some really good um, physical coach here in uh, in Real Madrid. They're really professional. They know exactly what you have to work with. They know mm, yeah. everything. Um, so I would say that being in this environment is definitely better for me. Yeah, for sure. For I, sure. I haven't been injured for two years now. Well, yeah, well, so knock on wood. Knock on wood. <laughs> Yeah, so I, I would say that uh, it's a good environment for me here. For sure. Yeah, if you could, like, just to give some, some listeners, like, some practical advice and to, to visualize it if, if they're just listening, uh, what, what would you, what does a gym session, like, look like? Uh, in, like, if you're going to take us through one of your harder days in the gym. Okay, so we have a gym after the practice, and if it's a hard day, um, yeah gym workouts so we go up and it's different it's different uh, players every day you know so they they take so you have gym after practice or whatever so you go in the gym and the physical coach has a screen and we have like um, two blocks and then you have like six exercises here and six on the other block mm -hmm. you have something in between those things so if let's say if you do an if you do a deadlift then in between you have to do an explosive exercise like jumping or jumping up on something or stuff like that so you do an explosive exercise between those hard sets or if you do mm -hmm. heavy squat you do jump squat um after without weight so it's explosive after that so that kind of uh, things yeah Nice, very nice. Yeah, yeah, great uh, contrast training. Yeah, like you and said, just like you do bench press, you have to do after you have to do with an elastic, like you're jumping, you know, like yeah, yeah, yeah. After. I love that exercise. So there is hard, but then after that, you have to do some extra mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And how, how often per week are, are you uh, in the gym? Uh, every day. But we're not wow. doing as hard every day, you know what I mean? Because we have some mm -hmm. games, so it's it's really different. But yeah, once a week, um, we have like hard, and then the other uh, days it's more explosive work and then some other mm -hmm. exercise. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, uh, sounds sounds really good. With with that being said, like I'm sure your nutrition's pretty pretty good. What type of do you follow like any specific diet or have any principles? Um, because I mean, I think a lot of women sometimes they're like, you know, worried about gaining too much muscle or, you know, too much weight from the gym. So how, how do you kind of view that? How do you, how do you view your diet overall? So I have a diet plan from our nutrition woman uh, who gave me. Um, so of course I have to, I never eat candy i never eat chocolate i never eat like um some sweet stuff um only in my coffee you know <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, not once in a while you can't can have some godies once once in a while yeah once in a while you can of course but i just yeah. don't do that um yeah i don't have it in my fridge so if you don't have it in your fridge you don't eat it you know exactly so, exactly I would say I'm really structured about what I eat because I know I'm the type of person if I eat a lot of bad stuff in two days, I gain weight, you know, so you know, have to mm. be and if you want to be on the same weight, you have to follow um, the meal plan, of course, and eat healthy and be ready for practice. So um, it's different how, how you are as a person, I would say, like, yeah. people gain weight, 
fast, some people I don't. And for me, in my case, I gain weight fast if I go out of my um, my nutrition plan and just eat whatever I want to eat because it tastes good, you know. But then the next yeah. day or some days after, you, I feel like you know, not good in my body. So yeah. So I think when you are pro footballer, you are on your job twenty four seven, you know. So one hundred percent. So I know if I say I have ten more years left. I will do this hard work for 10 years and then after me, Love it. Then, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. No, I get it. I, I'm the same way. Like, yeah, I eat, eat something bad next day. I feel like crap. And then I have some friends just, they eat what they want. They stay shredded. I'm like, you're lucky, you know. So there's a lot of girls on my team who is just like skinny and like, yeah. like that. But I'm just not building that way. So I really yeah, yeah, yeah. have what I eat and, and what For I sure. need in my body. Um, For sure. To stay fit. So. Mm -hmm. yeah. so with that being said, if you were to go out in you know Madrid and, and you were going to have like a cheat day, what, what's something you would eat? I don't really have a cheat day. That's uh, okay. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Kudos to you. So, or if, if I have a cheat day, you know, I have a salad and then maybe sweet potatoes. That's it, you know? <laughs> wow. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Very disciplined. Yeah, I would say and, I'm like dedicated for my nutrition and, and for... That's awesome. Yeah. So I don't really yeah, have I mean, a cheat day. But I'm, for the listener, you should have a cheat day. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, yeah for sure so with that being said i mean you said from the beginning that you know you, you've always been good at setting goals and and you've always been mentally strong where, where did that come from i just i just think i always had it in me because i've always been so competitive and um and me and my dad we have um we have like made this plan for me, you know, <laughs> like okay, okay, where I had to go, where I had to end up and stuff. Wow. And so my dad is a big ass, like a huge um supporter for me, and we have shared this whole journey together. And um, that's awesome. So, um, I would say my dad has really helped me being mentally strong, and and when it's your dream and you go out to another country, you. You, I would say that you're mentally prepared for that, and you're mentally prepared to do whatever it takes to make you, um, the best version of yourself. Um, Absolutely. So I would say I've always liked, you know, I have always been a family person. If it was a Friday night and I was younger and my people went out partying, I would rather stay home with my family. Like I'm. Well, wow, that's great. <laughs> family person, so. I've never had the the urge to go to go out and really like party or hang out with friends. I've always been like home and enjoying my mm. with my family. That's and, awesome. Yeah, so I've always been like I've been good on my own. I can I am good at living on my own, so I never really mm -hmm. feel lonely. And uh, so I would say that you you have to like living alone if you want to be a pro football. Absolutely, absolutely. No, that's that's very well said. Yeah. So, so with that being said, like, obviously, you know, you sound super disciplined and dialed in, like, are there any things that you do? What, what do you like to do on your off days to kind of get your mind off of football? Yeah, so it pretty much depends on how our week looks. Let's say if we have a game and you're off the next day, you are, you're, of course, you're tired. You want to mm. lay in the couch for maybe the half of the day, but then me and my some of my teammates from um, I have a good friend here. She's also from Denmark, and then I have mm. a good one from from Sweden. So I hang out mm -hmm. a lot with them. So then we go out for lunch. We go in the city. We shop. You know, do girl things. Yeah, there. little fika here and there. Huh? Little fika here and there. Yeah, fika. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. So we do that. Go into the city. It's an amazing town to live in, and and we like. Yeah, to I'm go. sure. Somewhere you can you can go out in my park. You can plan a little bit. It it mm -hmm. yeah. So we have sure. your friends or or how do you recover with things? I would say. I do. Yeah. With with that being said, any type of like specific recovery things that you do, yoga, ice bath, any anything like that. Or? Yeah. So we do ice bath. 
Um, and then I have recovery foods here. I actually have a lot of recovery things in my home, but yeah. I have the gun, you know, the massage. Yep. I have the recovery foods. I have the cups. I have. Uh, I mean, it's over there. I have yeah. like a massage pillow. I have everything. In wow. So, yeah. R really invest in your career. It's, it's great. Yeah, and then I have some um, powder to cook in, uh, to put in water, like recovery powder. Mm. Very nice, very nice. Yeah. So, what would you, what would you compare, like you know, like lifestyle, you know, between, you know, I know, I'm, I know Denmark and Sweden is quite similar, yeah. but like, what would you say, Denmark, you know, um, uh, Germany and and Spain? What would you say, like, lifestyle wise? I mean, Percy, because I'm, I'm very interested in culture. I love culture, and then just for the listeners, you know. So in Germany, I lived in Wolfsburg. There was not really so much to do. It's a really <laughs> city. And yeah. You know where it's a Volkswagen city, you say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's a lot of people who work and then just go home after, you know. Um. So in that in that city, um, there was not really like a big culture, like as, mm. you know. Um. So, but of course, Germany is very old school. It's uh, I would say I was not really like you know so um so how do they have you to live in that country it's not really <laughs> great, I would say. um and then spain it's uh, i had to get used to like eating later you know they eat like yeah, yeah, yeah. in the evening like at 10 you know and i'm from denmark and we ate like at six or seven <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Sister, you know so you had to had to get used to that living style and and people in Spain because it's so much cheaper than Scandinavian. So mm -hmm. we'll go out for dinner a lot here and just stay up late. And yeah, I had to get used to that. I would say. Yeah, 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 for sure. But but would you say overall you're you're pretty happy living in Madrid? Yes, it's definitely the best place I've been in my career. That's awesome. Even though I'm only wow. twenty two, but I definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you've lived a lot of places, so. Yeah. yeah, so, you know, kind of coming towards the end of the conversation, if you could just, like, run us through, like, a little day in your life, you know, what, what time you wake up and, uh, you know, when training is, uh, if you do extra training, like, the gym training, stuff like that. Just, I like to give listeners a, a practical idea of, you know, how you live your life. Okay, so um, a normal day would be for me to wake up 8 30 i wake up i go to breakfast in the club in the facilities um after breakfast we start at 10 10 15 in the gym we do activation or some gym exercise we're shared up in two groups normally so somebody has the one thing and the other group has another thing we go down to the field we start at 11 practice for one and a half hour after that, sometimes you can do extra work, like you can shoot. I do a lot of shooting free kicks with my left foot. That's one of my strengths, so I, I do that a lot. And uh, if I'm tired, or then I just stop after the practice. And then sometimes you can do extra work in the in the gym down on the field. We have a gym beside the field. We have two gyms. Mm. Like a more like upper body workout, like more explosive, and then you can do like four exercises and then you're done you know and then i go up i'm done i'm done around one or two every day i go home and then um, sometimes i do grocery before after practice you know and mm. to to do some small stuff or have a meeting or um yeah and then i do my recovery foods when i come home every day eat a good lunch and then mm. sometimes I just go for a walk in my park. I live beside a park here. Or I go with my, my friend into the city, eat lunch there, or just hanging out. And then mm. in the evening, I always talk with my family, always on FaceTime every day. Yeah. Um, and yeah, then I end up with uh, watching Netflix in the evening and just chill. And then I go... Um, in bed 10 30 and then i sleep at nice time. very nice sounds it sounds like a great day and and you said you're you're learning you're learning spanish now huh 
Yeah, so I have Spanish classes too, and that's after practice, yeah. How's that going for you? I would say it's a pretty hard language. Um, yeah. Latino language, I would say it's really hard for yeah. uh, for Scandinavian people uh, to learn because it's a whole different way to speak. Yeah. So it's definitely hard. And I had no uh, history before in Spanish, you know, so mm. I started. Would you say it's harder than German? Yeah, but it's also. Really? Cool. Okay. I had German in, in school, so yeah. I had the basics, but here I started like from scratch, you know, or live, you know, I didn't even. For sure. <laughs> so uh, I started from scratch there. And German is a yeah. bit the same. Up Denmark has some same words. Yeah. You can actually understand, even though we don't know the language sometimes. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, I, I noticed. Uh... I lived also in Germany and Sweden and I can understand, you know, I could speak, I learned German so I could understand Swedish. So it's, yeah, I think you're right. It's, but Spanish is, I think it's a much better language than German. I think yeah. Germans. German is so awful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't like the language. But yeah, Swedish yeah. But that's the yeah. thing about have been living in different countries. You understand and you learn a lot of language. You know, if I for sure. I almost speak five languages now. You know. Wow. Yeah. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah, it's really cool. So you know, coming towards the end of the conversation, I always like to ask this. You know, at twenty-two years old, I know you're young, but you have a lot of experience. Is there any age that you would go back to? Uh, to give yourself some advice with the knowledge that you have today, what would you, if you were to go back to that age, what would you tell yourself? Um, that's a hard question. Um, yeah. No, I, I would always say that I have been so dedicated and motivated. Like, even though for a young age, I knew where I wanted to be. So I've always been so, like, dedicated. Awesome. It's not like I've been at a point in my life where I was like, Oh my god, will I make it? You know, I always believed in myself. So Yeah. Um so in that case, if I was like that, I would go back and say, You will make it, you know, you have to keep going. But I've always been so like believing in myself and I knew I had the potential to go whenever mm -hmm. I wanted to, you know. So Yeah. I would say that I have I have done what's best for me all these years and and the steps I've taken have been for the best uh, in at that time, you know, and even though Germany mm. is not a good year, I still learn a lot from it. And here I am, on exactly. the it's better than I've ever been, you know. So, mm. so I would say I have no regrets, and I yeah, and I live day by day by the turns I've made, and I am happy for where I am today. Yeah, that's awesome, and and. You know, just just from this short conversation, you know, from the beginning, you know, you could hear that you had a vision, you had goals, you set that journey, you set that map, obviously, with your father, it was a big, you know, inspiration, but obviously, you, you uh, are the person who've made all those decisions, and you've been consistent and disciplined. So, so it's great to see you succeeding. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, let if you could just give three based off you know your knowledge if you could give any younger female footballer who wants to play professionally yeah, yeah three three tips i mean obviously you know the female game is, is growing a lot which is great to see but like you said you know maybe some females are living in a country that that the football is not as big and they have dreams to be where you're at and, and get bigger what are any specific tips that you that you would give them I would say that even though if you grow up in a country where the football is not that big in for women's side, I would say that there's always a better outcome. Um, you can do whatever you want to if you have the talent and you have the motivation for it. Mm -hmm. um, in my case, that's what I did and it worked for me, so why not for you, you know? Um, yeah. And then another thing is that you really need to love it, you know, with your heart, with everything. Um, you have to be so dedicated. I have said no to so many things from my life. Mm. Stuff. I cannot watch my little sister grow up every day on a daily basis. So you have to be ready for that sacrifice to, um, yeah, to make it and, um, and have fun with it and be happy to go to practice every day. And, 
and if that's not your path then there's another way you know for you for sure and then three um i would say that no cheat meals <laughs> <laughs> you can have cheese milk. I also if yeah. you put twist in there, I can have popcorn. Don't worry. I yeah. can be unhealthy too. I don't do yeah. that, but um yeah, free be um work hard, I would say. Work mm -hmm. hard. And you know, it doesn't mean that you have to stay um for for many hours after practice. You can just do five minutes and that's it and, and the long one it's um, it's a lot of minutes you use for exactly, it. and uh, and also when you go home, you are still a football player. Do what's good for your body, and you have to be really dedicated in that way and and work hard, not just only on the field but also outside. You know, so yeah. Mm. So always very well said, yeah. very well said. And you said your English wasn't good, so. Yeah. I would say it's very good, it's better than a lot of uh, Americans I speak to. So oh, I think your yeah. English is very good. <laughs> yeah, your English is good. Uh, so let, let's just end off with six, you know, six quick questions, fire round. Um, you can answer in as many or as little words as you want. Uh, so best player you've ever played against? Oh, I would say Colleen Graham. She is a winger from Barcelona. She is uh, well, really hard good. to defend. Yeah, yeah, and you, you were you were one v one against her. I'm guessing all the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. A little battle. You got a little battle going yes. on. No, she's definitely the best winger I've ever played against. Wow. Well, yeah. So, be best team you've ever played against? Uh, let's say, club wise, and uh, I mean internationally, you said Germany, but so club wise. Uh, club wise, Barcelona. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Day -day. Oh, it's so hard to get the ball when you meet them and they wow, are so, wow. they have been together for so many years in the same team. They just know each other. It's, they have relationships. Like mm. on the field you can see they're just yeah, amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh favorite healthy food. Favorite healthy food. Um I would say like a good salad with chicken. Yeah. Nice. Love that. So, uh, and then with that being said, favorite, if you were to go off your diet for, for a day, yeah. what, what would, what would your meal be? Um, <laughs> I don't, <laughs> I don't eat meat to be honest. I don't okay. think meat I eat that's chicken, you know? And so I would not say like a hamburger or anything. Okay. Probably be a burger with chicken. And then okay. some sweet potatoes. Yeah. Good call. Good call. Yeah. Uh, favorite favorite travel destination that you've been? Oh, I've been a lot of places. And, okay. But I have. It's hard. I would say when I was younger, when I was in New York, that was definitely. Okay. Wow. Really That's my home place. city. That's my home city. Yeah. A little overrated, yeah, but. Yeah, I, I like it a lot, but I was young, yeah. so it was kind of like new the whole thing. Yeah, so I, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, relaxing wise, I would say Thailand. I like Thailand. Yeah, I gotta go over there. Here, it's nice. Yeah, New York is definitely not relaxing. The opposite. No, it's a, we walk so much every day, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Like, Everyone's in a rush. No one. Were people nice over there? I don't even remember. It's a long time ago. Yeah. It was a yeah. World Cup where Brazil lost to Germany. Okay. One or something in that year. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, there was. I don't remember. I think. So. Yeah. Not as nice as Scandinavians, I'm sure. And then, uh, last question: your 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 dream dream destination. Um, in football. The, the, that and also to travel. Ah, um, to travel, I would say I would really love to go to Maldives. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. I've heard that's beautiful like, as well. To see that, and the water is so nice. Or maybe, um, I want to go to Las Vegas one day. <laughs> yeah, good call. Good call. It's not bad there. Yeah, and, and then what about football wise? 
I would say actually this is my dream destination. Yeah, I was gonna say. Yeah, I was gonna say. But I don't know if it gets that much better. I could see myself be here for many years and just that's awesome. Finally, feel home, and I have moved a lot when I was young, so I just need to settle down, have a base, you know. For and, sure. Um. Yeah, I definitely. I I don't have the other clubs I've been in. I've always thinking about like, okay, after this year, I have to go there. Mm. And here it's just like I don't want to go anywhere else. I just want to stay. Yeah, that's awesome. So that's awesome. Like, yeah. Hard to find, but definitely a great feeling. Yeah. And then last one, you 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 have two last ones: a favorite quote and then a favorite book. Um, a favorite book. It's a Danish one, so I don't know. Okay. <laughs> you know. Okay. But it's actually about um. And you, uh, a military guy who, uh-huh. has, um, who has been in the military for a long time, and he talks about the mental aspect and the physical aspect, and that's you awesome. Can learn a lot from that. Mm. Um, and then my favorite quote. Oh God! <laughs> she just be crazy and say like. Hard work beats talent. If talent doesn't work, yeah, well. you could be crazy. Why not? Yeah, yeah, I would say that one. Even though Sound. you're born with a talent, you need to work hard. Otherwise, the other people run you over. For sure, for sure. Yeah, appreciate you taking the time, Sophie. Know you're a busy lady. <laughs> um, if you could just, you know, plug anywhere, you know, for people to find you. Where's the best place? Instagram, Twitter. I don't have Twitter actually. Yeah, it's probably better off. So, yeah, I don't really have those social media. I don't want to look at bad comments. Um, but, yeah, Instagram is pretty much where I'm most active, I would say. Great, great. Yeah, so we'll, we'll just link that below. And then if you, you have any last words or we all good here. No, I enjoyed it. It was funny. To talk yeah, it was really good. Thanks for taking the time. Of course. All right, Sophie, thank you. Good luck with the rest of the season.